Why do we make horror movies? Why are they so exciting to watch? Why do we like feeling anxious on the edge of our seats frozen in fear? And why do our muscles tense when we're afraid? And how do directors construct a scene that can grip an audience's imagination so completely? After all, delighted audiences have given billions to be scared out of their seats with hair-raising moments. Like this. Welcome to The Review, where we love good cinema, story, and concepts. This week, we're looking at horror, what scares us, and how it's done. David Hume wrote in 1757, It seems an unaccountable pleasure which the spectators of a well-written tragedy receive from passions that are in themselves disagreeable and uneasy. And I think it's that unaccountable pleasure part that's really key here. Researchers at Georgetown University who study what happens in our brains when we get scared discuss fear in three stages. 1. We see or sense a potential threat. 2. The amygdala sends a signal deep in the base of the brain which makes us involuntarily freeze or jump. 3. The hypothalamus triggers the autonomic nervous system, the system responsible for fight or flight instincts. With movies we experience a fourth step, when in the absence of any actual danger we are awash in endorphins and dopamine. This may answer why many of us watch horror movies. They offer a catharsis against demons from the comfort of your living room. But how are our films able to capture that primal response and present it on screen? I think this is that well-written part of David Hume's quote. The term, mise en scène, literally, placing on stage, is used to describe the visual and spatial elements of a film. A hallmark of the horror genre is the use of long, prominent, projected shadows and underexposing shots to add a shroud of eeriness to every scene. Skilled use of set lighting, or lack thereof, adds a literal void that allows viewers to fill the shadows with what is most terrifying to them. Using slow, long shots, or even close-ups, or shooting through things, all add a sense of anxiety and mystery meant to unsettle. Long reaction shots of characters as they encounter the minimally shown monster allows the audience to imagine their own worst nightmare. The use of high or low angle shots in conjunction with tracking and panning gives the character a look as if they're unknowingly being watched. Editing together sound with images in a way to create new perceived meanings, in this case to create fear, is a unique facet of film. Though it seems this is an era of movie franchises and cinematic universes, the horror genre has always run deep with sequels, prequels, and retellings. Netflix recently released The Haunting of Bly Manor, which is loosely based on Henry James' 1898 novella The Turn of the Screw, a story about a governess who, caring for two children at a remote estate, becomes convinced that the grounds are haunted. And I highly recommend it. The other show that I want to recommend to horror fans is another Netflix original, Juon Origins, I'm probably saying Juon wrong, and it's a prequel of sorts, allegedly telling the true origin of the curse that the long-running Japanese horror franchise Juon is based on. Juon is known as The Grudge here in the United States. I highly recommend both of these shows, especially if you're looking for a good movie for Halloween or spooky season in general. Well, thank you for watching, and if you like the show, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos, and see you next time on The Review.